It's Wednesday, the 16th of February. Pinochet, mad, but in good company. <laughs> Posh on catwalk. She's wearing thin. <laughs> RA play Catholic card. They're pulling out early. Please welcome the man who loves to get in a paddy, Mr. Ian Lee. <laughs> Our screens. Of course, it's the Northern Ireland peace process. A bit like Brookside, but with slightly fewer guns and bombs. <laughs> but a few more kneecappings. All those crazy, larger than life characters with their cashy sayings like, The Pope's an Antichrist! No, no, no! You've got five minutes to get out of the building. Brilliant. <laughs> Love it. Admittedly. <laughs> No matter. Admittedly, it can be a bit far-fetched. Like, do you remember the episode when Jerry Adams' voice changed, or the bit where Ian Paisley pretended to be a vicar? <laughs> Brilliant. But just like Coronation Street, there's no black characters, but they have introduced a cheeky gay, Mandelson, who's always asking... <laughs> Always ask and see Jerry and Martin's weapons. But enough of this crazy knick-knack nonsense, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome the girl whose eyes are always smiling, Miss Daisy Donovan. It's amazing to see Posh Spice on the catwalk. I mean, singing, dancing, acting, TV presenting, and now modelling. Is there anything she can do? <laughs> but forget Posh Spice. Let me tell you what's coming up in tonight's show. Our US correspondent Eddie Brill investigates the lure of the White House. A Hollywood leading man can have sex with movie stars, but the president can have sex with movie stars and start wars. And we'll be getting inside the mind of naked comedian Ben Miller. Have you noticed anything in this field in the last few weeks which is even slightly out of the ordinary? No. Anything which might be something? I'll be finding out later why Britain is in danger of becoming a nation of female lushes. <laughs> so, Ian, does your special lady mind you coming home a little bit worse for wear? Well, I've got to admit that she does get a bit annoyed when I stumble in drunk, dress up in her sexy lingerie, oh. and then whisper kinky suggestions in her ear while I stroke her. God, I don't know how your girlfriend puts up with you. Not my girlfriend, it's my Alsatian. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for tonight's headlines. And here are tonight's top stories. The stalker who crashed into Princess Anne's gates had been repeatedly warned to leave her alone. He said that he just went to hear it himself from the horse's mouth. <laughs> While on his soapbox tour of Britain, William Haig revealed exactly what he thinks about some of his shadow cabinet. Have you got plans for Widdicombe? And Redwood in a Tory cabinet? Yes, that was a question about mentally ill people and people with learning disabilities. <laughs> Following the speech, there was controversy when Michael Portillo left his blind friend behind. Michael! A leading doctor has said that he sees no reason why Paul Gascoigne should be sidelined by his recent injury. He pointed out that it wouldn't be the first time Gazza went onto the pitch plastered. <laughs> 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 the real reason for the breakdown of the peace talks became clear when Jerry Adams revealed what Peter Mandelson offered him in return for IRA decommissioning. Would I like a gin and tonic or would I like a whiskey? Would I like a chocolate biscuit? Would I like a picture? He's also given the clearest hint that the IRA ceasefire is about to end. In 15 seconds, and counting. <laughs> and those were tonight's headlines. Here with his report on the campaign race is People's Choice Ricky Gervais. Today the ballots closed as the Labour Party voted on who they believe should be their candidate for Mayor of London. Despite recent setbacks, it seems inevitable that whoever wins the Labour Party nomination will be voted in as Mayor. So let's have a look at the candidates. Well, Frank Dobson, beard, he's out. Ken Livingstone, looks like one of his newts and talks like one of their metal frogs off the smash adverts. That leaves Claire Jackson. She is a woman, which is a shame, but she gets my vote and I'll tell you why. She didn't mind getting her tits out on film. A quality I respect in a mayor. I wouldn't want to see him now. Probably like a 
couple of spaniels' ears. But in Women in Love, they were on the turn even then, she was like 40. But they did the trick. The film was disappointing, though. When I rent a video, an 18-rated video, directed by Ken Russell and called Women in Love, I don't want to see two fat benders wrestling. Turning <laughs> out with Babe. That wasn't what I was... And Babe 2, Pig in the City, that turned out to be a documentary about Dawn French. The most embarrassing moment when I took back a video to complain about it, it was in Reading. Turns out I just read it wrong. I thought it said Schindler's Tits. I thought, ooh, German sounding, filmed in black and white, probably a bit of dodgy housewife home movie. And the blurb on the back led me up the garden path. It said, magnificent, have a box of tissues ready. <laughs> I used about two. Anyway, whoever's voted in mayor will be really powerful. They can do what they want in London, teach gay in schools and have dwarves in the police force. Good luck to them. This is Ricky Gervais for the 11 o'clock show outside the GLC and the wheel thing. London, obviously. <laughs> British are coming. Yes, once again, the British have stormed the Oscar nominations. It may have been made in America by an American studio with an American script, American money, American stars, and even have the word American in the title, but American Beauty is directed by a Brit. So well done us. Brilliant. <laughs> but could anyone make an Oscar-winning film? The answer, surprisingly, is yes, providing they follow our simple guidelines to Oscar success. It's our Oscar do's and don'ts. Do. Base your movie on a best-selling novel that translates well to the screen, like The Green Mile, based on a Stephen King book. Don't... Use the first successful book you can think of. A Haynes car manual just won't do. As proven by the Spielberg flop Indiana Jones and the Peugeot 406 of Dune. <laughs> do. Include a surprise comeback role for a forgotten superstar, like John Travolta in Pulp Fiction or Burt Reynolds in Boogie Nights. Don't... Forget to choose your comeback kid wisely. Don't risk alienating the Academy by casting Heidi High's Ruth Maddock as a hard nose. Don't play by the rules, love struck lap dancer. <laughs> Do. Do. Cast a heavyweight star in a challenging role. Robert De Niro's performance as unhinged loner Travis Bickle got him a nomination for Taxi Driver. Don't... Expect success by casting lanky ha-ha man Nicholas Lindhurst. It's unlikely he would have exerted the same menacing presence, muttering, Are you looking at me? Yeah? <laughs> Pick a story that illustrates the triumph of the human spirit despite terrible odds, such as wrongful conviction, disease or war. Don't! Shoot a three-hour film about a man balancing a new potato on the end of his knob. <laughs> Unless you've convinced Tom Hanks to play the potato. And those are our Oscar-nominated do's and don'ts. That's it for part one. Still to come in part two. We'll be finding out just what drives a man to hound an innocent public figure. From self-confessed stalker comedian Ben Miller. But first, our street hawker tries to dump his load. <laughs> I've, I've got a few, a few of them asylum seekers in the back of the van. And uh, <laughs> I'm looking for a home for them. I'll give you five pounds No, but the problem is money, though. You know, it's just where am I going to keep these people? I'll just take one. <laughs> I, I just can. I mean, I'm, I'm at work right now anyway, so it would be sort of tough to... Well, I can bring them around after work. They're lovely people, lovely people. You won't regret it. Well, I've done a runner. Welcome back to the 11 o'clock show on Wednesday the 16th of February. Now time for another look at tonight's headlines. Adams refuses Mandelson's demands. Mandelson says, all right then, no tongues. <laughs> Doctors declare Pinochet unfit for trial. Shipman to be sent in for second opinion. <laughs> Sting announces boycott of Nazi Austria. Several other European countries announce right-wing coalitions. <laughs> well, the hot news today, Princess Anne has finally made it into the celebrity big league. No, she isn't screwing Darren Day. She's got a stalker. It seems that everyone who's anyone is being followed round by a dribbling nutcase. Marty McCutcheon's got one, Anna Ford's got one, and of course Richard's got Judy. <laughs> we all have our favourite celebrities, but how can you be sure that your love for a star isn't going too far? Well, it's easy. Just follow our simple guide to being a fan, not a fanatic. You're a fan if... You've got all their records. You're a fanatic if... You've got all their underwear. You're a fan if... You send a cheery letter to your idol asking for their autograph. You're a fanatic if... You send a cheery letter to your idol asking them if they want their ear back. <laughs> You're a fan if... 
You see yourself as an authority on their work. You're a fanatic if... You see yourself on Crime Watch. <laughs> You're a fan if... You name your cat after them. You're a fanatic if... You then marry your cat on the front lawn witness by some stuffed mice. <laughs> You're a fan <laughs> if... You follow your idol's career with great interest. You're a fanatic if... You follow your idol with an axe. <laughs> You're a fan if... You write their name on your pencil case. You're a fanatic if... You carve your name on their arm. <laughs> You're a fan if... Your idol's work speaks to you. You're a fanatic if... Your idol speaks to you directly through the telly and tells you to bum rabbits. <laughs> and that was our guide to being a fan or a fanatic. <laughs> Ian? Yes, Daisy. You, Please, it's... come on, let's I hear. I want to ask you, uh, how many pints can you drink before you start feeling ill? Um, that depends. Alcohol or semen? <laughs> alcohol. I don't drink alcohol. <laughs> That's because you're a weedy man. A report out today claims women are drinking more than ever. But is it true? I sent myself to London to find out. Ooh. According to a report out this week, young women are 19 times more likely to drink alcohol than their counterparts in the 1920s. I've come here to London, home of the new hard-drinking ladette, to find out why British women are drinking more and more and more. Do you think it's professional to drink at work? To drink at work? Not professional, no. Mm. I go out with Zoe, we go to the Met Bar, we have a few drinks, more glasses of wine, one thing leads to another, I start touching her hair, then, you know, a bit of dancing, and we're gone. We go back to her house, put on a bit of a show for Norman. Does that make me a ladette? Um, oh, sorry, lesbian. <laughs> yes. I thought so, thank you. And you're a professional at work at the moment? Yeah. Right. And are you drinking at the moment? Says it already, doesn't it? <laughs> I just do trust with you. So, at the moment, you know, you're a perfectly nice man. Right, right. Not hugely attractive. Uh -huh. That's not healthy. <laughs> now, I've got here some alcohol. Uh -huh. I hope you don't mind me drinking. Well, saddle up, hi ho, you and me is going for a ride. <laughs> Could you take off your glasses? Sure. sure. And your jacket. Sure. Well, the jacket. Take the jacket off. Okay. Why not? There's three strangers are being drunk. Um, the first one is obviously you confess a secret. What's your darkest secret? I'm not drunk in the moment, so I wouldn't be able to answer that, I'm afraid. I bet the throat out of a kitten. <laughs> Sorry? Does drinking make you more aggressive? Probably. Well, I couldn't hear. Probably. Uh, could you speak louder? You're just making my life difficult. Probably! Is that better? Don't fucking shout at me! <laughs> so there you have it. Drinking can have some bizarre side effects, but who cares? I love you all. This has been Daisy Donovan for the 11 o'clock show. Indeed. Well, not nearly as revealing as tonight's guest. He's a self-confessed stalker, having spent more time in the shadow of John Noakes than Shep, and when he's not hiding from the Blue Peter hard man, he shows his face, and occasionally his balls, as one half of Armstrong and Miller. He's also about to go straight into ITV's new drama, The Blind Date. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ben Miller. <laughs> Oh, Calm yeah. down, I know it's exciting. I know, I know, terribly exciting. Oh, maybe not that exciting then. Uh, now, stalking is big news today. Did you really stalk John Noakes? I did. I'm a huge fan of John Noakes. And actually, the first, my first professional engagement was uh, I actually tracked... I was the person who found John Noakes. We wouldn't have John on our screens now Without if it you. wasn't for me, I claim. Because uh, he bastard. kind of... I know. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of sort of given up uh, broadcasting and I, uh, I sort of flew to... I didn't sort of fly, I flew. <laughs> I flew to Mallorca and stalked him through the local supermarket. I sort of uh, took lots of photographs on him on a long lens, you know, and uh, stalked him for a week. Yeah. And then did a show about it at the Edinburgh Festival. 
because I couldn't think of any material. <laughs> Since SN is being stalked, who the hell would follow her? Yeah. I know. I mean, well, Captain Mark Phillips, obviously, <laughs> for, a, for a very short while. Yeah. And he realised. <laughs> and he kind of lost it. Yeah, he kind of backed off, didn't he? And, um, would you consider she... stalking her? I would, yeah. Would you? I would. I'd give it a go. I'd give mm. it a shot. I don't know if I'd be quite as kind of organised as the stalker she's got at the moment. He's very good, isn't he? Mm. I mean, he faxes ahead. He kind of uh, <laughs> makes sure everybody knows when he's going to be there. So in the stalking community, you rate each other? Oh, so yeah. A, I've got yeah. this definite pecking order, yeah. yeah. And the Toff stalkers. He's obviously a Toff stalker. You know, Toffs get their own Toff stalkers. Oh, Are there any other members of royalty that you, you'd stalk? Yeah, I mean, there's a quite... I, I'm, I'm a little bit of a... You know, I'm not, I'd stalk the slightly less known ones. Mm. Harry, I'd, I'd probably pick up <laughs> him. I'd, the boys, uh, then. The young ones you can have in a fight quite easily. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The ones who, yeah, yeah, exactly. The ones who I could sort of, uh, yeah, I could put down without too much trouble. And then, uh, and then uh, put down. <laughs> I think the Queen Mum's a safe No, I, did I say that? Put down. I didn't mean that. Put down. I, I wouldn't kill anybody. <laughs> I wouldn't kill them. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> really weird. Um, do you think having a stalker is becoming a celebrity fashion accessory? It's kind of quite important now, yeah. Um, I mean, I think one of the things that we're going to see in the future, um, I think predicting the future is something we should all do as often as possible. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think one of the things we're going to see in the future uh, is people, everyone's going to be famous, you know, a lot of people are going to be on TV, and it's going to be difficult to find people who aren't okay. famous themselves. So celebrities are going to have to start stalking all celebrities. Other celebrities. Yeah. So I think we're going to see Time Team. Uh, <laughs> 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 I think we're going to see them choosing some pretty choice, some pretty choice people, say Elton John, someone like that. Yep. And then uh, and gradually nice. we're going to have to work a whole, a whole system because there's just not going to be enough stalkers to go round. I vote we all stalk Alan Titchmarsh. Done. And then kick the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea. Now, you're stalking again in your new drama, The Blind Date. Is it addictive? Are you hooked to it? I am hooked, probably. But I think the most important thing about... Uh, about blind dates. Obviously, before I was stalking in a in a comedy way. Now, of course, it's a serious drama way. So I've changed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit nasty. Yeah, I'm a little bit nasty. A little bit more edgy, you know. And I'm, it's drama. It's drama stalking. It's completely different. It requires a lot more uh, thought and preparation. Whole character you have to build. The, now yeah. you're famous enough now to have your own stalker. Mm. It's nice of you to say so. Well, yeah. I, you know, I've told thanks to this show, maybe. Maybe yeah. after tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Who would you want to stalk you in, in an ideal world? I would quite like the members of Time Team, I have to say. <laughs> I'd like, I don't know who I'd like from Time Team. I'd like Tony, obviously. obviously. But yeah. Probably wouldn't get Tony. Probably get the guy who sifts in the buckets, uses the... Uh, oh, yeah. The guy who's got lots of yeah, buckets. Sorry, Tony, I haven't found anything this week. Um, <laughs> yes, we've gone through yeah, all the mud. Yeah, 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 we found a Vols tooth, it's possibly, but, you know, that looks like it's about a week old, so... Um, and then, uh, then there's a the guy, of course, the big time fat guy. Team, though. Couldn't get time team. Not all, did you, do you think? No, let's say time, time team, team are very, very busy. Very, very yeah. busy. They've got a lot. Of They're unraveling to find. the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're a busy unraveling the past. Exactly. That's and doing job. a great job of it. Yeah. yeah. A big name stalking you. Who would you have? I'd go for Bowie. Nice choice. Yes. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? <laughs> On the street corners. Here's David Bowie again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, phone calls. He's I'm watching you, Miller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you live. <laughs> and he does the low voices, wouldn't he? I know you live. That was Elvis, hang on. Do both, yeah. Well, yeah. no, sadly, Elvis, of course. Is dead. It stalks no more. It stalks no more, I think. Yeah. He stalks the holy toilet yeah. up in heaven. <laughs> to keep men's cubicles. Um, now, you're best friends with All Saints, apparently. <sighs> yeah. So, you... <laughs> it's a tough life, huh? Yeah. You oh. went to the premiere of The Beach last week. Uh-huh. What's the real story behind Nicole and Leonardo going into the... Oh, uh, God, what were they... What were they be doing? Oh, Leonardo. Oh, what were they be doing? <laughs> they disappeared uh, for half an yeah. hour. <laughs> what did they do? They would be watching their Robbie Williams videos. Or sharing, you know, going through Nicole's makeup bag. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Get her. <laughs> now, you're no stranger to taking your clothes off on screen, which is lovely. Um, but how would you react to seeing the following people in the nude? We've got... There's Posh Spice. Would you like to see her? I like it, yeah. In yeah. That? Hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> dog. <laughs> <laughs> what about Jerry Adams? I think that'd Ooh, be a... Look, that yeah. got a groan. <laughs> but at least you know he didn't have a gun. <laughs> This one, the Queen Mum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Was actually the Queen Mum naked? Looking that's good. That's actually treason. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's quite... Go to the tower. That. That's quite turned my stomach, I think. <laughs> <laughs> can, you have a look at, can you have a quick look at the Queen Mother again? Look at those sad little knuckles. <laughs> On that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, Ben Miller. Yay! Thanks, you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Daisy, I am very, very excited. I'll tell you for why. I've got my very first fan letter. Oh, Can wow. I read it to you? Yeah, do. Listen to this. Dear TV Z and Lee, mm -hmm. I think you're quite good. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Love Chris. Excellent. P.S. Do you think you could possibly get someone like Eddie Brill to do a special report on the American presidential election? Well, Chris, you're in luck. Here's Eddie Brill now with a special report on the American presidential election. The president of the USA. Why would anyone want the job? Well, in America, politics is showbiz, only more so. A Hollywood leading man can have sex with movie stars, but the president can have sex with movie stars and start wars. Look at John F. Kennedy. He was fucking Marilyn Monroe and the Vietnamese at the same time. <laughs> okay, Clinton had Monica Lewinsky in Kosovo, but the point is, he had the choice. The race to get the pick of next year's interns is already underway. And here are the leading contenders. George Bush Jr., Republican. Despite a campaign that is plagued with allegations of rampant cocaine abuse, it's a typical American riches to riches fairy tale. He may have been born with a silver spoon up his nose, but George has turned his back on his privileged background to embrace caring conservatism, an ideology that dictates when you do fuck the Hispanic housemaid, you should leave her at least 50 pesos in the morning. He's up against John McCain. A Navy pilot in Vietnam, he was shot down and spent the 70s being bummed by the Viet Cong in a bamboo cage. <laughs> Al Gore, Democrat. He's been vice president for the past eight years and has been so close to power, he's almost had spunk on his face. As vice president, Clinton has involved him in such major decisions as, what shall I have on my fries, Al? Ketchup or mayo? He's up against Bill Bradley, a former basketball star whose main claim to fame is that he's taller than all the other candidates. In the next six months, these four guys will be whittled down to two. But which one will end up with his finger on the button? Don't worry. The final decision is in the hands of the American people, half of whom couldn't find their own country on the map, and the other two-thirds who couldn't spell it if you gave them the M and the H. This is Eddie Brill, The 11 O'Clock Show, New York. That is, that is good. Am I yes. So now you know. Now it's time to check up on the news just in. The churches have attacked the BBC for dumbing down religious programmes. They point to the new BBC schedule, which includes songs of praise, too hot to handle, when nuns <laughs> attack and can't pray, won't pray. <laughs> a doctor who carved his name on a patient's stomach after an operation was ordered to pay a million pounds compensation as he was skinny engraved an IOU on her arse. <laughs> Residents in a Lancashire village have asked for a seven-foot nude statue to be removed. One villager said, not only is it lewd and distasteful, but it blocks the entrance to the village whorehouse. <laughs> Research has shown that people walking dogs are three times more likely to have strangers come up to them in the street for a chat. The most likely conversation being, are you going to clear that shit up or what? <laughs> and that was the news just in. <laughs> and that's all from tonight's show. On tomorrow's show, we'll be talking proper with royal correspondent James Whitaker. But before we go, some late news. After yesterday's Oscar nominations, Hollywood was shocked at the surprise inclusion of Disney's all-turtle remake of Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what do you like? Good night. <laughs>